Today I'm going to show you how to set up bank rules in Xero. So bank rules are a really good way to improve the consistency and efficiency of your reconciliation process. So the first thing we're going to do is just jump into a reconcile and I've got one on page four here that I'm going to show you. Um, so we're going to just uh, bypass the, the conversation of source documents. Clearly having a source document is ideal and if you've got a source document therefore there's a bill and therefore it will get attached that way so there's no need for a bank rule. But that's not always the case and there are instances where you won't have source documents um, such as direct debits or bank fees or um, equipment finance repayments and things like that. So in this video I'm just going to show you how to set up a bank rule. So we're going to take this one here for example. So all you need to do is just click on the drop down under options and create bank rule. Now there's three types of bank rules that you can create. You can do a spend money, a receive money or a transfer money rule. In this case, because this particular transaction was money out of the account, it's defaulted us here to the spend money rule tab. Um, so what we need to do, this screen is setting out the parameters of the rule. So if these parameters match a transaction that comes through the bank, this is how Xero will apply the rule. And of course, it won't automatically reconcile it. You still have the option to review it and amend it and change it if you want to. But if the rule matches the transaction, then uh, it's a lot more efficient to reconcile this way. So up the top here, now this is Kmart. So you could go to Kmart, um, a number of different Kmarts. So we don't want to set this particular rule up for Kmart to be exactly how it is here. Because if you go to Kmart at in Sydney, um, then this rule isn't going to work because obviously it's not going to say Kmart Logan Home. It's going to say Kmart Mascot. So we want to um, reduce the information down on this so that it will expand our search fields out. So we can take all of this out and just leave Kmart. Now in this instance, Kmart has come through on the payee line and the description line. We also have reference lines and, and other different lines. So depending on how the FPOS facility has been set up will depend on which line it comes through to. So if Kmart Logan Home has it set up to come through onto the description line, but Kmart Mascot has it set up to come into the payee line, depending on how the rule has been set up, it may or may not pick up for all of those transactions. So in this instance, I'm going to change this to any field. So when Kmart is in any field, the rule will be picked up and therefore I don't need this payee line because the payee line is, is incorporated into here. The other thing that we need to do is because I've taken um, all of that other stuff out of here, um, it defaults to equals, which means that the the description on any line has to equal Kmart and nothing else, which is not going to be um, matching any of the rules either. So we want to change this to contains. So when any transactions come through on any field that contain Kmart, this rule will be applied. So we want to attach it to a supplier profile. So we'll put in Kmart here. If Kmart isn't already in there, you can type it and it will create a create a supplier profile for you. Um, now description is a little bit tricky because it could be something different each time. So you can either put in here um, something, if, if you're setting one up for Australia Post for example, you could put in their postage because um, possibly it would be postage every time, but you can leave that blank. Um, put in here the ac typical account code. Now sometimes if it does change uh, from time to time, then it's at the reconciliation of the individual transaction level that you can modify this rule for that particular transaction if you want to. Um, put in the default account code, uh, the GST code and the tracking category if you use if you use tracking. Now this is how it's going to be reconciled. So um, the reference will be set, I mean I don't ever have it set as by me during the bank rec because that's something else that I need to um, 
need to then do myself. So I would usually um, put the references set by the reference. Um, run this rule on, it will pick up the current bank account that you're running it on. But if you have a number of bank accounts or credit cards or, you know, a number of um, places where you pay Kmart from, then you don't want to have to set this rule up for every single account. So you could select it for all bank accounts, which means every time that this, um, the Kmart, you have an expense from Kmart, it will run this rule on all of your accounts. And then just put a description down here. So this um, pulls through the information that was on the reference in the bank feed. So in this case, I just take all of that out and leave it as Kmart. So now we are happy with how the rule is set up. We can select save. It will take you straight back to where you were in uh, the bank feed and now it's it's attached this rule for you. So when you're doing the reconciliations, you can have a look here, have a look here, quickly see that, yep, it's all good to go and you can just tick it off. So anything where, um, where that is already filled out like that is it zero is picking up a bank rule like this one here. So the hierarchy is it will pick up a green, which is a source, uh, a, a bill that's been entered and then it will go to a rule and then it will go to a remembered transaction and then, and then it will be left empty for you to decide how it needs to be um, dealt with. Now the other thing that you can do with rules if you're not quite sure if maybe you want to have a look at the setup or you might want to change this particular one you can select view details and it's in here that you can change it and this will just change it on this um, particular transaction and leave the rule intact. So we can save this one and then reconcile it off. So that's how you create bank rules in Xero, a really quick and easy way to make your data entry more consistent and more efficient.